And at that point in my life, I did not know anyone with Alzheimer's. And when I left the Alzheimer's Society, my grandfather actually was diagnosed with dementia. And the biggest impact was just seeing the changes in my grandpa. Um, he was really quick and funny and witty, and he would always tease us. And just as the dementia progressed, he was confused a lot. And you know, it's really hard to lose your grandpa. I mean, he was still, there was times when he was still really funny and witty and quick, but you know, he seemed nervous a lot of the time, scared. And, and with Alzheimer's, you know, you have to lose that person twice. You know, you lose the person that you knew your whole life, and then you lose them again at the end. Even when he was living with Alzheimer's, like he still was so funny. And he used to send me notes, we used to always write letters to each other, and he'd always write me recipes about making swamp cake with like frogs and like things that we found in the bush. My grandma was my grandpa's caregiver, and she's amazing. They were together 70 years, which is insane, but um, yeah, I, she, she was amazing. Um, two weeks before my grandpa actually passed away, we went to visit him and he was very lucid and we had a really fun weekend and he was playing cards with us and, you know, he told me that, you know, sometimes his memory isn't very good, but my grandmother was his angel and she always took such good care of him even though he knew that she, that he, maybe he was a little bit annoying sometimes, but, you know, it was, it was sweet. I would recommend not being scared to talk about it and not trying to do it by yourself because a lot of people think that they can handle it and they want to do everything or they're embarrassed by it or they just don't know if other people understand but there's resources that are available that are really helpful even my grandma didn't take advantage of them there was a support group at the, um, at the community that they lived in that I think she went to sometimes sometimes she went to the casino because she just needed a break I mean <laughs> You know, because she, she had that one, you know, two-hour time slot a week. Actually, my grandfather loves poppies a lot, and um, we used to always pick the poppies and eat them, and my grandma would always make poppy seed cake. And the poppy was just something that always represented my grandfather, and at his funeral even, like, they had the poppies. But when my grandpa passed away, back on, I'm from Vancouver Island, right in front of my parents' house, this poppy grew. Like, it, it, they don't grow where my parents live, and it was, it was off season, and there was one poppy that grew. Ah. Anyways. <laughs> Being part of the walk run is really meaningful to me, especially now. The whole experience is the people, you know, it's not necessarily the top for me, it's not about the running, but it's it's everybody's stories and seeing people with their families and just being able to do that together. I think that that's really special. Like you feel there's so much support and community around Alzheimer's at the walk run. It was really nice just to see like the people that you're walking for. Luckily, he was very lucid the last time I saw him, but the time before that, he was very confused and it was really hard. Um, so the quality, like, I mean, really appreciating those moments when, you know, he's there with you and, you know, he remembers everything, it's, it's pretty special. I just learned that, you know, you really need to appreciate the time with the people that you have. My, my grandpa it was really sudden, actually. It was, it was sort of out of the blue, like he was really healthy. And I was really lucky that I had seen him two weeks before, but, you know, sometimes, even now, like I let too much time go by, like so, you know, just making the time to, to visit the people that you love because you never know.